I have type 2 diabetes and I'm a dessert hound. Crap. Now what? This is the Happy Diabetic Kitchen, the podcast about people who love to eat and cook healthy. This is your guide to the world of healthy cooking and conversation about happy diabetic living and lifestyles, where we turn ordinary ingredients into something extraordinary. Welcome to the kitchen and let's get cooking. Hello everyone, I am Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic, and this is the Internet's Most Delicious Cooking Podcast. I'm here in the kitchen getting ready to explore a healthy diabetic lifestyle. I want to help you flatten the eating learning curve, help you face your fears, and share my tips to a happy and healthy diabetic way of eating. If you're new to the show, welcome. I'm so happy you're here hanging out in my kitchen today. Hey, Jason, what's up? Hey, not too much. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So, uh, Jason, this episode um, today is all about desserts. So do you have a favorite go-to dessert? Ooh. I mean, really anything chocolate, um, mousse, maybe flourless chocolate cake, Ooh, something along those lines. Yeah, I'm big in chocolate also. Um, But, you know, the one thing that always seems to come up, people are always asking me about, so I guess because I'm diabetic, I can't eat desserts anymore. Right. So, um, and I know that it's challenging for people. And, you know, I'm kind of a moderate dessert eater. I love fresh fruit. Uh, I love fruit pies. I like brownies. I love chocolate chip cookies. So we just thought we would share a little bit about healthy eating as it relates to desserts today and share one of my favorite dessert recipes. Awesome. So... We're going to explore healthy dessert options, like I said, and ideas about eating desserts. And I want to thank Jen for this episode idea. Thanks, Jen. You're awesome. Um, We're going to also have an amazing recipe of the podcast. It's my famous, most requested dessert that I make. It's my toasted angel food cake fruit bruschetta. And today we have a very cool because of my diabetes story and much, much more. So welcome to the kitchen. Let's get cooking. I like to start off the podcast with a because of my diabetes story. Simply finish this statement. Because of my diabetes, blank, you know, something positive about your diabetes that was unexpected. Tell us your story. Head over to happydiabetic.com and hit the send voicemail link and record your story. I would love to share with all the happy diabetics out there listening. Today's because of my diabetes story is from Jana a type 3 diabetic. And if you don't know what a type 3 diabetic is, let me quickly tell you. We know what a type 1 is. We know what a type 2 is. Type 3 are the caregivers, you know, the people that love us. Not the diabetic police, as my friend Bill Polanski would say, but these are the people that care for us, encourage us, cook for us, and and are really our rah-rah supporters. So Jana, who is from Southern California, is talking about her amazing daughter, Annie, who is a type 1 diabetic, diagnosed at a very early age. So thank you, Jana. Here we go. Hello, Chef Robert and Jason. My name is Jana, and I'm a mom of a type 1 diabetic. Because of my daughter's type 1 diabetes, I've become very aware of how food affects our bodies. It's amazing how small adjustments in our diets can create significant, and positive changes. Thank you, Jana. Jana is what we call a true type 3 diabetic. That's a poor person of love. Thank you, Jana. You rock. Okay, so it's now time for the recipe of the podcast. This is just a super fun and super easy dish. The recipe is on my website, happydiabetic.com. And I call this my fruit bruschetta. You know, the tomato Italian style bruschetta with tomatoes and onions and garlic and maybe olives and 
and oregano and basil topped on fresh toast. And one of these days, I'm going to give you my real bruschetta recipe, but this is my take on fruit bruschetta. So let's talk about what's in this dish. You'll need two tablespoons of fresh blueberries, two tablespoons of raspberries, four large strawberries, four teaspoons of Hershey's, simply five chocolate sauce. Now, I love this chocolate sauce because it's rich, it's thick, it's creamy, there's no high fructose corn syrup, it's simply five ingredients. Your local supermarket will definitely have it. I have four small slices of angel food cake, about one ounce each, two tablespoons of whipped cream, one teaspoon of stevia, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, let's put it all together. First, we're going to slice one inch thick slices of angel food cake. Now, turn your oven on and switch it to broil. Now, if you've never used the broiler in your kitchen, I cannot be held responsible for what is about to happen. But we're going to take the angel food cake, put it on a cookie sheet, under the broiler, and in about, I would say, 30 seconds to five days, depending on the condition of your broiler, but really it should take about 30 to 40 seconds, the angel food cake is going to get all toasty and warm and caramely. It'll look like toast from a toaster. But listen, do not do this in your toaster. I have tried it. Um, Your toaster will catch on fire. I mean, think about it this way. Angel food cake is a lot like a marshmallow. Okay, so I've got it sliced underneath in my broiler, watching it carefully, waiting it to get all nice and caramely. Now, I have to be honest with you. If the phone rings, you're going to have to let the answering machine pick it up because I'm afraid if you walk away, this angel food cake will burn. If you have a dog and he needs to go out, he's just going to have to wait because if you walk away, the angel food cake will will like ignite like a marshmallow. So you just want to kind of watch it. Now, if Publisher's Clearinghouse comes knocking at the front door and they're there with one of those giant checks, let her burn because, listen, you'll be able to buy yourself a new kitchen. So Angel Food Cake is done. We've taken it out of the broiler. It's toasty, it's golden, it's caramely, and it's nice and warm. I'm going to place the Angel Food Cake on a plate. I'm going to top the, the piece of Angel Food Cake with about a half a tablespoon of whipped cream. Now, I like to buy like the Ready Whip, real whipped cream in a can. If you look at the nutritionals on that, you will see there's not much there. It's just all natural, real cream, very delicious. So a little dollop on top of the angel food cake. I'm going to take one strawberry, slice it, put that right on top of the whipped cream. Then I'm going to sprinkle the dessert bruschetta with the blueberries and the raspberries And I'm going to take the stevia and the cinnamon, about a 50-50 mixture. I'm going to mix it together and make like a cinnamon sugar mixture of that, okay? I like to use Splenda Naturals. It's a really great stevia product. That's my go-to. So then I'm going to dust the cake with stevia and the cinnamon mixture, kind of like sprinkling it with that really nice cinnamony, sugary taste. Lastly, I'm going to take the one tablespoon of chocolate sauce right out of the Simply Five bottle, and I'm going to squeeze it on top in a zigzag motion, and I'm just going to drizzle it right on top. Not a lot, just enough to know you're alive. That's it. My fresh fruit bruschetta. Check it out. It's on my website, happydiabetic.com. This dessert will make you happy. You are listening to the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Podcast. I'm your host, Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic. Be sure to follow me on all my social links. You'll simply find them all at happydiabetic.com. Just look for all my links at the top of the right-hand side of my homepage. And if you have a question for me, go to my website, hit the contact tab. You ask questions, I'll answer them. Who knows? You might even become part of the next show if I select your question. Okay, so we're going to get into desserts, eating desserts with diabetes. So there's a popular misconception about diabetes is that it's caused by eating too many sugary foods. So that we know is not true. But while sweets can affect your blood sugar, 
They do not cause you to develop diabetes. However, when you have diabetes, you must carefully monitor your carbohydrate intake because carbs convert to sugar. That's really the key. This is because carbohydrates are responsible for raising your blood sugar and sugar levels. So you can still enjoy those sugary foods that you love when you have diabetes, but it is important to do so in moderation with some understanding of how it could impact your blood sugar. This includes, of course, sugars found in desserts. So here's my dessert tip number 45, and I got a little help from Rondell Hamilton, author of the American Diabetes Association cookbook, Healthy Calendar Diabetic Cooking. Everyone focuses on sugar, she says, but what's really important is the total carbohydrates. And if you have a ha- need to have a small piece of pie for dessert, what I do is I skip a starchy vegetable during the dinner time. So think about it this way and think small. Along with deciding how often you have dessert, you'll also need to limit how much you eat, obviously. And that can be a challenge. Remember, for me and for you, portion control really is the key. Everything in moderation. Now, what about fruit? I had someone stop me the other day and said, I was diagnosed with diabetes, but my doctor said, no more fruit for me. I'm not sure where that's coming from. There's an amazing amount of diabetic educators out there who can certainly help you take the mystery out of that eating for yourself. But although we know fruit is high in carbohydrates, it's also packed with vitamins, minerals, and fiber. And we all know a high fiber diet is really great for people living with diabetes. So for me, when I crave something, I mean, I want something like right away. So typically what I have in my refrigerator all the time is a bowl of, for me, I like cherry, sugar-free jello. And I'll take the sugar-free jello when I have that craving, maybe cut up an apple, some grapes, some strawberries, mix it up with the jello, top it, and away I go. Now, we eat a lot of really great fruit salads in our house because it's really good fruit time here in Iowa and all over the country. The honeydew melon's amazing. The blueberries, strawberries are awesome. And what I simply do is take a medium bowl. I combine about one cup of cubed cantaloupe, one cup of cubed honeydew melon, blueberries, strawberries. And then what I like to do is sprinkle that with one tablespoon of chopped mint leaves or some fresh basil, maybe a little balsamic vinegar, maybe a tablespoon of honey, mix it gently, and you're simply ready to go. So consider some ideas for eating desserts. People with diabetes can still enjoy something sweet. We understand that. But again, it's important to know how certain foods impact your blood sugar. The key is to manage your portions. Again, I know you've heard me say that a thousand times, but the most significant part of my healthy happy diabetic eating lifestyle is eating more often throughout the day, but smaller portions. So here's some examples of some of my diabetic friendly desserts that I love a lot. So I'll take a little no sugar added granola and mix that with my fruit salad. Again, my angel food uh, cake or fruit bruschetta or just a slice of angel food cake with a little whipped cream is really amazing. Some sugar-free gelatin made with fresh fruit and real whipped cream. Sugar-free puddings with real whipped cream are really amazing. I'm a pie guy, but I know if I'm eating pie or cake, I'm going to take half the portion. I love creamy baked custards, and we talked about this in our last episode. And if you missed it, tune in. There's an amazing recipe for grilled peaches. Grilled fruit is just unbelievable. Again, high-fiber foods, lower in carbs, less salt, and lots of flavor. That's the key. There is a better way to manage your diabetes, and let me introduce you to Diet Thrive. Now, last week episode, we checked my blood sugar on the air with my new blood monitor testing tools. I I mean, I kind of think of my my testing tools as like my miniature laboratory, and I test two to three times a day. So I'm going to open up my container and grab a test strip. I'm going to slide it into my meter, if I can get it in there. 
Okay, it's ready to go. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my lancet device, and I change my lancets about once every other day. I'm gonna poke my finger. Now, an amazing thing about this lancet device, which I learned. The spring on this is super heavy duty. So when it jabs my finger, it's virtually painless because it's so fast. So I'm going to add the blood to my meter. And it's counting down. Three, two, one, 123. Okay, awesome. Very cool. That's a pretty good number. Um, I did test this morning and it was 184. So it's come down a little bit. So that's awesome. Not sure exactly why that is, but I know that my meter is accurate and I'm on course. So with Diathrive, your testing supplies are shipped directly to your home, which is what I really like them when you need them. Matter of fact, I just got my box yesterday. Gone are the days when visiting multiple stores to find the right strips, waiting in long lines to buy supplies, sorting through your insurance paperwork and requirements. That is a pain in my rear. Best of all, with plans starting at only $8 a month, Diathrive is probably going to cost you less than what you're paying today. Diathrive saves you time and money, plus they're pretty fun to work with. They're awesome. So why don't you give Diathrive a chance to show you there's a better way to manage your diabetes. They're so convinced you'll love their service that they're offering you $10 off your first testing supply order. Simply use the code HAPPYDIABETIC at checkout at diathrive.com, D-I-A-T-H-R-I-V-E, diathrive.com. I'll have a link on my website. Check it out, and happy testing. Our podcast is produced and engineered by Jason Lewis. Our theme music by the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Band and yours truly, Chef Robert on the electric guitar. And of course, as always, hanging around, our two kitchen mascots, Scout and Tucker. I think they're eating lunch today somewhere. I, I don't see him right now. Oh, there's Tucker. Okay, there's Scout. All right, they're all with us. Awesome. So thanks for tuning in, and let me leave you with this thought. The author, Donald L. Hicks, who wrote Look Into Stillness, once said, Life is like a six-slice apple pie at a 12-guest dinner banquet. If you just sit back and wait for it to come to you, chances are you're going to miss dessert. So long for now, and remember, no one loves you more than me.